It's championship weekend in college football. What prospects have we got our eyes on this week right here on Locked on NFL Draft? Let's go. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. Welcome into another edition of Locked On NFL Draft. It's former NFL AFL defensive back Eric Crocker at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. Also locked on 49ers. Ryan Tracy from Rogue Analytics at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter, NFL33.com, and locked on Chiefs. I'm John Harris, football analyst, silent reporter for the 191 Houston Texans. We'll be talking a lot of draft here in Houston and also at my website, footballtakeover.com. A reminder. It's a crossover Thursday, and it's presented by our friends at Price Picks. Price Picks is so much fun and easy to play. No competing with other players, just you versus projections. You pick two to five players in a multitude of sports. If they score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. We love Price Picks, and we know you will too. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKED ON. That's pricepicks.com, promo code LOCKED ON. And gentlemen, we're locked on this weekend, and one of the three of us will actually be at the biggest game all weekend. Raise your hand if you're going to Las Vegas on Friday. There it is, Eric Crocker. That's right. Eric will be at the Pac-12 championship game. Guys, arguably the most important game of the weekend with USC sitting number four in the CFP. But Utah beat USC at Salt Lake City. Now they play them in Las Vegas. We saw Utah last year beat Oregon and then turn around and hammer Oregon again. But this is about prospects and guys that we're watching Utah USC. If we take Caleb Williams out of the picture for now, what prospects in this game are we really excited about seeing? Ryan Tracy, we will start with you on either side. Utah or USC, which prospects are you excited about seeing this weekend in the Pac-12 championship game? I want confirmation because right now the guy that's sitting at the top of my board in the wide receiver column is Jordan Addison. Can he live up to that? A, a lot of complaints about the, the total yardage and that kind of issue. He's missed a couple of games. Can he now step it up here as we look towards the, the playoff? And I, assuming they get there, what can he do in these next two games? I, I'm really interested to see what that level is that he can kick it into right now. Eric Crocker, you're going to see the game up close, but I know the Trojans are close to your heart. But are there prospects in this game that you're excited about seeing and what they might tell you as they get ready for the 2023 NFL draft? Yeah, there's a couple guys right off the bat. Cam Rising, right? You look at the big quarterback from Utah and, and what he's been so far this year. 22 touchdowns, seven interceptions. He's been pretty steady, but he's not viewed as just this big polarizing prospect as a quarterback. Well, not everybody's going to be first-round picks. Not everybody's going to be second-round picks. When will Cam Rising go? I think having a huge game here in this Pac-12 championship can definitely go a long ways as it pertains to his evaluation and kind of what it looks like winning in the moment. Yeah, think about scouts, right? Or just when Pac-12 plays. Friday nights, late at night. Saturday, late at night. A lot of East Coast people, they don't see it. A lot of scouts, they fall asleep. I know me personally, you know, I have a rooting interest in Pac-12 teams and even then, I mean, they're playing at 10 o'clock at night, Central Time, when I'm watching. Sometimes I just fall asleep, middle of the first quarter. So I think a lot of people aren't watching those games. Scouts, I'm pretty sure they're doing their due diligence for the most part. But I do think for the world to see Cam Rising, this is a big opportunity. And not just for him. There's a cornerback on the other side, three interceptions this year. Makai Blackman, cornerback for USC. That's another guy I'm looking to see. How does he do? You know, Utah, they're going to want to try to run the ball, pound the ball. Is Makai Blackman, who's not... The biggest of guys, six foot, 175, is going to come up and try to fill run lanes. Uh, we always talk about crack replace. Receiver comes down, cracks the end, is a cornerback shooting right now and closing off that edge as well as being a contained guy. Those are the things I want to see. Does he have that type of, that level of physicality? And it's going to be cool to really be able to see all that up close and personal. I'm going to give you a guy, and he's in contention for TE2. Tight end one is going to be Michael Mayer from Notre Dame for me. I don't think there's any, any question as far as that goes. But tight end two, uh, I like Luke Musgrave from out of Oregon State. He's been banged up this year, but I think he is a, w a wildly, wildly talented dude, the son of Bill Musgrave, uh, former offensive coordinator at pro and college level. 
But last time against Southern California, let me read you these numbers from Dalton Kincaid. I'm sure we mm-hmm. remember them. Dalton Kincaid, 16 receptions, 234 yards, and a touchdown. Now, prior to that, he had kind of been a couple catches here, a couple catches there, nothing big. Seven, 16 for 234. Then against Washington State, 7 for 56 in a tutty. Against Oregon, 11 for 99. Against Colorado, 5 for 102 in a touchdown. Dalton Kincaid, oh, by the way, didn't even get in the finalist of the John Mackey Award. So I think he's got something to prove. But USC on the flip side, they got something to prove. Can they slow down Dalton Kincaid, who I think um, should have been one of the top three tight ends? I think he is. He, I think he's right there with Musgrave at, at two and three. And I, don't, and I go back and forth. I think they're really, really close, kind of in the, the 50 to 55 range where I would put him in the Harris 100. But you talk about a poor I, – I compare him to a poor man, Zach Ertz. I think, and he wears number 86, so you kind of see that in his game. He's a great receiver. I think his blocking needs a little bit, a little bit of work. But I think those prospects in the Utah-USC game, along with Andrew Voorhees, number 72, keep an eye on him. If you're, if you're one of the trenches lovers, Andrew Voorhees is arguably the strongest dude that is going to be at the Combine. He is stacked, and you could see it in the way he plays. And I know a certain team in my town that could use some interior play. Um, and better interior play. And Andrew Voorhees would look very, very good uh, in red, white, and blue, the Houston Texans. But that's not for me to decide now. That is for a later date. Now, there's going to be a lot of purple in Arlington. TCU's taking on Kansas State. You heard Ryan mention Jordan Addison as his wide receiver one. Quinn Johnston's my wide receiver one. We'll talk about him and other prospects in that game to watch coming up next. But first, we got to talk about... Audible. Audible's releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we're sure you're going to love. Find Think Like a Champion now wherever you get your podcast. Think Like a Champion is a brand new podcast from Russell Wilson Audible. Russell Wilson, along with co-host Harry Wilson and Trevor Moa, dig into high-performance athletes, artists, and leaders pushing the boundaries of their potential. You hear from Bon Miller. You're going to hear from Tim Tebow. Each episode features interviews with Olympic medalists, NFL stars, and business leaders. They'll swap stories. They'll share proven mental techniques that have gotten the world's most elite performers across the finish line and beyond. Available for free on Audible. Head over to Locked On Presents for a sneak peek of Think Like a Champion or catch the full series available anywhere you get your podcasts available everywhere. Now, Audible, get in the game. We thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most, the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Now on this podcast, we have debated wide receiver one for a while. And we talked about Quentin Johnston versus Jordan Addison right now for a while. And so I'm just going to jump right on it. Quentin Johnson's a guy I, I just love watching at 6'4", 217 pounds. He looks like Kelvin Benjamin, but he runs like Will Fuller, kind of. Maybe not that fast. But you put that combination, it gets kind of scary. But maybe we don't focus too much on Quentin Johnson, especially because of the game he had against Kansas. Sorry, sorry Ryan, it just like it came out. He's I mean, playing it's just, Kansas State, though. I know, but they're playing Kansas State. <laughs> and that brings up a really interesting team to me because Kansas State's one of those teams you look and go, you know, I don't know if I love a ton of their prospects like as NFL guys, but I do know that some of those guys are going to end up in the NFL, including Eric Crocker, a five foot six, one hundred and eighty pound running back named Deuce Vaughn. Where do you project Deuce going to the next level? Do you think he can be as I this was my comp, and I'll let you both chime in on this. My comp was if Christian McCaffrey married Darren Sproles and the baby <laughs> Was Deuce Vaughn? <laughs> and Eric, well, you, you know what? If I remember correctly, did Sproles go to Kansas State as well? Yes, he did. Wow, all right. So look at that uh, connection there. Deuce Vaughn, the guy who's uh, going to be running for over 1,300 yards this season, especially at that size, good yards per carry. He's a guy that has that nice, quick first step in explosiveness. Where will he go, though? That's the biggest question. And I'm not quite sure he has the girth of the some of the other guys that you want to see even smaller right right like quorum quorum's not a big running back but he's still thicker than deuce vaughn so i I think that's the part where teams are going to you know have to make that decision is he just a little too undersized now 
It doesn't matter if you're undersized. It's on you to prove guys wrong. It just might cost you a little bit of money up front. But on the back end, if you go to the NFL, you provide some type of value to a team, whether it's as a return guy or maybe a third down specialist, catch the ball out of the backfield, then he'll be fine. If I Right now, I have to say he's a day three guy. Ryan, your thoughts about Deuce Vaughn? Yeah, I, I like him as well. Um, day three, I think we'll be fine. The question is going to be, he's got the speed. Yeah. How much is the penalty going to be there for evaluators that just can't take the size thing? Not everybody can be Darren Sproles, even if you look like him and you wear the old uniform from K-State. Like, I think, I think it could be a little bit later on day three if, if the evaluators feel that it's just hard to keep up physically and project, you know, completing a rookie contract. In today's NFL, second contract is, is difficult to swallow no matter who the running back is. So can he outplay everybody in that first four-year contract? He's fascinating. I saw him last year at our bowl game, the Texas Bowl, and he really is that small. I mean, you see him and you're like, it, it's almost disconcerting. You're like, this guy is, that's Deuce Vaughn. You just think, well, TV, he's got to be big in real life. No, 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 no. He's that, he's that small. But then you see him hide behind his lineman and dart out, and he's strong, though, because he was breaking arm tackles in that game. I mean, LSU didn't have their, their main defenders, but LSU couldn't slow him down because of that he would get behind him and then he would dart out he's got great vision he's a coach's kid uh i think deuce vaughn gets really uh really interesting one guy i love for kansas state in this game is number 91 felix anaduke uzoma who was just named big 12 defensive player of the year which did sit well with some people from the university of texas but that's for them to figure out he will be chasing max duggan quarterback at tcu and we talked a lot about quarterbacks but i don't think duggan's a guy that we've talked about and his story is a good one because he had been a three-year starter and then he gets replaced by Sonny Dykes. Sonny Dykes says, no, I'm going with Chandler Morris. That's the guy. Morris gets hurt in the first game. Duggan has to go in the game. And not only does he save that game, but he then saves the entire season by playing like the champion that he is. But is he just a good college quarterback or is he a guy that maybe sticks around in the league like a Taylor Heineke has for the Washington Commanders? Ryan Tracy, your thoughts about Max Duggan from TCU? Uh, Heineke is an interesting comparison. I do feel like he's not a finished product, that he's got ceiling he can chase. And it, I, it, this goes back to our conversation we had yesterday about having the right guys in the room to have a plan to develop you. We've seen Bill Belichick do this a couple of times too, where he drafts a guy, brings him up, all of a sudden he can ship him off to the 49ers and make a windfall, right, in draft picks. This reminds me of what a path could be for Doug. Is somebody can raise him up. You're going to probably have to ship him off to get your value at, but he might be a guy who starts for a second team in his rookie contract. Eric, your thoughts about Max Duggan, who, A, should get a trip to NYC to be part of the Heisman crew, at least I hope he will, and B, draft prospects of Max Duggan. He's played extremely well. He's definitely lifting up TCU right now. TCU is undefeated. Undefeated, you know, say that out loud. It sounds a little <laughs> awkward at first, but it's like, wow, they're playing extremely well. Whether it's you know, with a guy out there like Quentin Johnston catching balls from Duggan or just Doug, Duggan kind of carrying his team. And I think anytime you see a guy with his profile, not the biggest of guys, six foot two, around 210 pounds, you look at Jimmy Garoppolo, six foot two, around 220 pounds, right? Like, I see a kind of a little comparison there where they're not the biggest of guys, so they end up falling a little bit in the draft. Maybe he goes to a situation, like you said, 2A. Uh, Bilicek, or I know another coach that likes guys like that, that maybe don't have this most, you know, big time athleticism. Well, I say that, then he goes and drafts Trey Lance, but Kyle Shanahan, you know, look at the Nick Mullins and, and uh, CJ Beathard and guys like that who weren't the best of athletes, but he liked guys that weren't very big. They didn't even have to have the biggest arm, but can you execute in the offense? I think that's something that we see Duggan do very well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be a fun game, Ryan. I'll tell you another guy that, that I'm going to keep an eye on because when you look back, for Johnson and Doug, they got 74 yards on K-State the last time they played. And some of that is because of the guy that nobody talks about, and that's Julius Brents, yep. six foot four, two 202, a guy that has the size to hang with Johnson, at least early in the route. I don't think he has a long speed to even come close to competing. He did give up that touchdown he got in that ball game, but that's something I think a second bite at the apple and trying to stop Johnson, that might be the matchup to watch. Yeah, Julius Brent's going to the Senior Bowl, so we'll get an opportunity to see him up close and personal. All right, LSU, Georgia in the SEC, UCF, Tulane, in AAC, Purdue, Michigan in the Big Ten, Clemson, North Carolina in ACC, Fresno State, Boise State in Mountain West. We will pick a game and a prospect that we'll have our eyes on. We'll do that 
next in our final segment of Locked On NFL Draft. But we got to talk about BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis on any sport out there. If you're in the World Cup, I know a lot of people get in the World Cup because the United States uh, ended up with a 1-0 win, 1-0, excuse me, win uh, a few days ago. You can follow the World Cup. You can follow NFL. You can follow college football, basketball, and you can get the latest odds and trends for your every professional amateur league that's out there. They got it all at betonline.net. And if you love a sports podcast, which you know you do, you listen to us. You can find those at Bet Online as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fixed. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. And the games are starting this weekend. Man, Friday night, Akron, Buffalo, and the MAC, North Texas UTSA Conference USA Championship. I love Frank Harris Jr., I think he's kind of a multi use weapon at the next level in the NFL. And they've also got a safety at UTSA named Rashad Wisdom who is a stone-cold killer. He reminds me of Bob Sanders, if you remember Bob Sanders. We've got the Pac-12 championship. Those games are all on Friday. But then we've got a load of them that are taking place on Saturday. And we've already talked about a few. So, gentlemen, I want you to pick your game and pick your prospect. The one – and it doesn't have to be one. You can – if you got a game and there are a couple of guys that you want to watch in that particular game, let's have at it. And Eric Crocker – we will start with you. I know you're going to be on Las Vegas. You got you guys on Utah and USC, but I know Saturday you'll be in front of a TV wanting to see which game and which prospect stands out the most to you. LSU, Georgia, Kayshawn Butte against the secondary <laughs> of Georgia. <laughs> We've been waiting for Kayshawn to really step up and have that big, impactful game. Last game, they needed him against Texas A&M. Really tough loss for LSU down the stretch there. Four catches, 43 yards. And most of his season has kind of gone like that when people were projecting him to be a top 10 pick. Now, is this a Jaden Daniels issue who's been a little bit inconsistent as a passer? Or is it an issue of, dang, I kind of got to be the guy and maybe people are paying more attention to me? Maybe not as much uh, attention to a guy like Malik Neighbors, who Neighbors is the one that has consistently had the better games. A couple of weeks removed from a seven-catch, 129-yard game. Last week against Texas A&M, seven catches, 69 yards. He's been far more consistent as a pass catcher than what we've seen from the other guy, Kayshawn Boutte. And when I say far more consistent, I mean just in having some of these big games in there. I'd say Kayshawn has been more consistent with just being playing at this certain level. But... I'm curious to see what does he look like against these Georgia DBs. We know they're going to be aggressive. We know they're going to play man coverage. You're going to have to free yourself up in routes. They're going to make difficult on you. They're going to get pressure on your quarterback a lot. Can you help your quarterback out? If he can, then we're talking about him hopefully being a first-round pick and living up to the bill of or the expectations of what were set on him early in this season. No doubt. Ryan Tracy, pick your conference championship game and the prospect that you got your eyes on. Maybe two. It's going to be ACC for me because the defensive line unit has a lot of big names. Two guys that we're talking about going to the 15, right? For me, it's about confirmation. Can Miles Murphy make sure that he's the number two edge rusher selected? I think that's a possibility. Watch 98, folks. See what you think. But that's not the end of the story. We've seen Clemson schools uh, classes in the past have a number of guys get drafted, and maybe the guy who's drafted first isn't the guy that ends up being the biggest impact as a pro. So – Brisse, I think you have to get a feel for him a little bit more up and down. Certainly got to pay attention to him. But it's K.J. Henry for me that I feel like is the guy that flies under the radar and yeah, might have true. the highest upside in this group. So watch all of them. Pay attention. Derek May has enough scramble in him that I think that could be a little bit problematic, especially for the edge guys. But if they can chase him down, I think that goes a long way towards solidifying their spots. I got two guys that are kind of off the beaten path, and they're – they're. Um... One is in the AAC championship game, and he's going to the Senior Bowl, and it's Tulane running back Ty J. Spears. Over the last two, four, six games, here's what he's done. 151, 125, 157, 130. That was against UCF at a loss. He went eight for 130. He was averaging over 16 yards a carry. Then he went 121 against SMU, and then in a upset win up at Cincinnati, he had 181 yards on 35 carries. Two touchdowns. He has 14 carries on the year. He's going to be at the Senior Bowl. He's not the biggest guy in the world. He's 5'11", 195. But my goodness, is he tough, and he has got good vision. Uh, he can get the edge. He can run between the tackles. 
he is really, really fun to watch. The other guy who I think is going to have a challenge against what I think is a good Michigan secondary, I think it's a great one. I think DJ Turner is a good prospect at corner. But Charlie Jones from Purdue is a legit burner, and he's also going to the Senior Bowl. He's a legit 4-3 guy. And I don't think Purdue wins this game. In fact, I think it's going to be really difficult for them to keep it close. And Vegas agrees at 16 and a half. But a guy like Charlie Jones can make things difficult because of that speed down the field. And if you get a cheap one deep and Jones beats a guy deep and catches one and maybe they blow a coverage and catches another one, all of a sudden it gets really, really interesting for Michigan. I don't know if Michigan has to win. But if Purdue, being a 16.5-point underdog, upsets them, I think a, a big portion of that is going to be what Charlie Jones does. And if you want to have a trenches guy in that game, Mozzie Smith, Mozzie Smith, number 58 from Michigan, is really moving up the boards to be kind of my number one big defensive tackle. Brise, 300-pounder. There's some others that have got some movement skills. Mozzie Smith is maybe the best athlete in this draft, pound for pound at 338 pounds. So – I'm really excited about what that, what that guy can do. It's going to be one hell of a championship weekend, and you've got your prospects to watch. And we thank you for listening to us talk about them tonight right here on Locked on NFL Draft and making us your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Day podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. For Ryan, for Eric, I'm John. We will see you next week. We'll talk about all these great championship games, all the great stuff happening in the NFL, of course, right here on Locked On NFL Draft. Let's go.